Margins and paddings, believe it or not, are the secret sauce to a clean website design. If you get them right, your pages will come across as being clean, organized, and professionally designed. But if you get them wrong, well, you're gonna end up with a clunky, unorganized page that won't inspire a lot of trust in visitors. So let's talk about how to properly and effectively use margins and paddings. Before we start, if this is the first video you're watching on our channel, consider subscribing. We talk a lot about web design, business, and online marketing here at Thrive Themes, and if any of these things speak to you, we'll be more than happy to have you join our family. Okay, margins and paddings. What's the big deal and what's the difference? Margins are the space that we create on the outside of a container or an element. If we add in 20 pixels of margin all around a container, that means that we're going to have 20 pixels of you know, empty space outside of it all around. And if there were any surrounding elements by the container that we're currently working on, they are now sitting at a distance of 20 pixels away. Margins push nearby elements away from the container that we're currently working on. Paddings, on the other hand, don't push elements away from whichever element we're currently editing because paddings don't create space outside of the container at all. Instead, they create breathing room inside the container itself. And to best illustrate this, let me just show you an example. Say that I have a content box with an image inside it and no padding. In that case, well, that's it, right? The image would just sit inside the container itself and there wouldn't be any empty space around it. But if I were to add 48 pixels of padding all around my container, you can now see how there's a distance between the image and the edge of the container itself. We have now created breathing room within our content box. But like I said earlier, this doesn't mean that we're going to be pushing other elements away from our content box. If I were to add in an image on top of this container, it's going to sit literally right above it without having any breathing room because we're not making use of any margins. It's crucial that you understand the difference by heart between margins and paddings and when to best use each of them. And while sometimes they may appear to do the same thing, which is to create space between elements, understand that it's best practice to use margins in one-off scenarios when you want to push objects away from each other and paddings when you're trying to create breathing room and internal space for an element. And this is especially true when you're working on your background sections. You see, when you're working on your page and you have multiple background sections stacked on top of each other with content inside of each of them, you don't want to be assigning margins to the first and last element of your background section to make your background section stretch. Um, that's not what margins are for. Yes, you may end up with a similar result if you were to do that, but it's not the right way of doing it. It's gonna be very painful to make that section mobile responsive. What we really wanna be doing is using paddings instead. Just as a quick summary, remember that you want to use paddings to create internal space inside a container and reserve margins for specific scenarios where objects need separation. Now, I'm super picky about my margins and paddings. I like being consistent with how much margin and padding I'm using, and I've even built systems and guidelines that I follow all the time to make sure I remain consistent. And I think that the most important rule that I've always followed is to always use multiples of fours when I'm adding either margins or paddings. Take a look at this. I have a content box with some elements inside it. If I give this content box 32 pixels of padding all around, which no splash is a multiple of four, um, that means that if I switch over to tablet mode and I set my padding to be 25% of my original measurement, which was 32 pixels, that means that on tablet, my content box is only going to have 24 pixels of padding. And if I jump over to mobile, I can do the same exact thing. I can set my padding to be 50% of my original measurement and have 16 pixels of padding all around. And I even do this with font sizes too. I make sure that my font sizes are multiples of fours so that I can scale them down appropriately and consistently across all of my devices. By using multiples of fours, I can divide and scale down my paddings and my margins and my font sizes evenly and as much as, as, much as I need to across all of my devices. If I need more real estate screen on mobile, that means that I can just scale down my paddings by force, divide them by force as much as I need to. And keep in mind that we also use multiples of force because you're not always going to want the same exact padding all around your container. Sometimes you may want 32 pixels of vertical padding and only 16 pixels of horizontal padding. But by using multiples of force, 
at least you know you're always going to be precise in your measurements, even if they're not the same all around your container. If you try doing this with 33 pixels of margin or 51 pixels of padding, which are not multiples of force, you're gonna have a hard time scaling down because you're gonna have a hard time dividing these numbers evenly because um, you're gonna have decimal numbers everywhere and it's just gonna be harder for you to be consistent. This is the way Apple does it on most of their pages, by the way, and I think we can agree that Apple is, you know, they're one to follow when it comes to web design. When I build software, I follow a bootstrap breakpoint system, which means that I design my pages to make sure that when the page width is 992 pixels or lower, I decrease the size of my paddings by 25%. And when the screen size keeps getting smaller at 768, I decrease them by another 25%. And I keep doing this until I hit, I hit a uh, screen width that is the equivalent to mobile, which is typically between 320 and 385. I typically have my paddings to be either 16 or 20 pixels. Now we Thrive Architect users don't have to follow Bootstrap or any other breakpoint system because we simply need to design things once for desktop and then we adjust things to make sure they look good on tablet and mobile. But I still find that being disciplined about using multiples of four helps me be consistent throughout my design work. Now there's one more thing about margins that I wanna bring up before I wrap up this video, which is that there is one more use case for them. While the primary reason why you're ever going to use margins is to create distance between two objects, you can also use margins to attract other objects towards a container or an element. And again, let's just look at an example of what this means. Do you see this section? It looks kind of cool having three different elements sitting on top of each other, right? Well, creating this sort of layout is actually rather easy. You simply need to drag each element on top of each other using negative margins. First, you're gonna have your background text layer, then you're gonna drag in your metal layer underneath it, and then the last layer underneath the middle one. And now it's just a question of using negative margins to position each layer on top of each other. Now, when you're using negative margins, don't worry about using multiples of four. Here, you kind of just want to position each element wherever you want. Just don't forget to make sure to adjust your negative margins on mobile devices as well, because they will need refinements. Anyways, hopefully this video has made you think about how you're using margins and paddings on your pages as well. If you're building your pages with Thrive Architect, then you have it easier than others out there, because the only thing you really need to do is figure out how much padding you want to have on desktop and there's no right answer. I mean, you obviously want something that makes sense, but whether you have your background sections have 98 pixels of top and bottom padding or 88 pixels of top and bottom padding, that's really up to you. It's your personal choice and preference. Uh, you do wanna make sure that you're scaling that down appropriately on mobile devices and that you're being consistent throughout all of your sections. I'm down in the comment section below in case you have any questions and if you wanna grab a license for Thrive Architect at the best possible price, you can do so by clicking the link down in the description box below. It's been a real pleasure as usual and I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you, bye.